I move that we adopt the minutes of the December 1 School Safety and Police Relations Committee meeting. I second. Great. Um, so I'll just do roll call in the order that you appear on my screen. So, uh, Tony? Aye. Will? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Amanda? Aye. Mia? Aye. Susan? Aye. Eliana? Aye. Edie? Aye. Joan? Aye. Zach? Aye. All right. Um, okay, so for the first part of the agenda, um, I wanted to just sort of reground ourselves in the guiding principles and agreements that we came up with at the first meeting. And so, um, Eliana, are you willing to read through those and guide that part of the agenda? Uh, I was going to, I just don't actually know where they are. I was, I just didn't know if you could like reshare them or something. I'm going to just share my screen and project them oh, okay. for everyone to, to see as you're reading along. Can everyone see those? So it looks like we have ensuring students are ensuring that students are a central focus throughout the work. Uh, I think we've been holding to that pretty well. Um, prioritizing people who come from the most impacted communities. Um, Well-rounded group uh, of stakeholders with both formal and informal decision-making power. Uh, building in time for relationship and trust building, establishing, oh my god, I... an honor group agreements throughout the work, identified shared values around safety to inform the committee's recommendations, and incorporating opportunities to discuss and analyze relevant research and data. Um... Listen for understanding and not to respond. Speaking your truth respectfully. Whenever possible, let the first voice and response to a question be from a person historically marginalized in our culture, including youth, indigenous people, people of color, LGBTQ people, and women. Um, taking space and making space, so sharing airtime. All ideas get a fair hearing, honor intentions, and intent, intent, intend to impact. Uh, avoid jargon, personal stories, shared breakouts are confidential unless you have permission to share them and stay present. Is there any discussion on that? Do people wanna um, reflect at all on our principles and um, agreements? I just want to say thank you for the reminder to stay present, which is a good one for me at the end of a busy day. I feel like like it's a good a good time to look back at those, especially as we start to like finalize what we're trying to do here. I think it's easy to sort of get lost in in what we're doing, and it's good to just remind like why we're here. I just wanted to clarify one of them, which was I, the one around um, honoring intentions and, and then the thing about impact. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah, for resharing what number is that? Six. Um, is that, I, I think that's meant to be honor intentions and attend to impact. A-T-T-E-N-D, is that right? That's how I've seen that one before, That just the idea that um, we honor that we're all you know, we have trust and honor that we're holding good intentions uh, for how we show up in this space. And when we've impacted um, someone else in the group in a way that perhaps we didn't intend to, that we attend to that impact, right? That we give attention to it and um, do what we can to make amends um, 
and give attention to the impact that might have happened, even if it, you know, especially if it was unintentional. Does that sound right? I'm seeing some nodding heads. That's that. what I think we agreed on. I think it was just a typo. But that's yeah, I just point. wanted to clarify. Great. I actually tried to edit the document, but I don't have editing privileges. So Keisha is listening and maybe she can just go and edit that word for us. She says, will do. Um, oh my goodness. Is it a, is there a birthday I'm seeing in the chat? Joan, is it your birthday today? It is. Wow. Well, thank you for joining us on your birthday. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Happy birthday, Joan. Thanks. It's safe to sing. We're separated. <laughs> That's I'll I'll I feel I can hear you singing in the air. That's <laughs> I am happy to follow your lead, Will, on a birthday song. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really want to. It'll probably sound terrible because there'll be a slight amount of lag. So there's pretty much no chance we'll all be in unison, um, which might be hilarious, but would probably just be terrible for all the musicians among us. So. <laughs> I'm I'm happy to just have the singing. Imagine the singing surrounding me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right. So the next part of the agenda is just to give an overview of what the plan is for tonight. So um, we're gonna do a reflection on the process, sort of where we've you know where we've been, what the intention was with the charge, where we're at right now, and sort of what the future holds for the next few months. Um, and we're gonna look at the questions that everybody came up with. And thank you so much for taking your time to write some really thoughtful questions. And it was, I, I think everyone has access um, to that document, the responses there, but it's been uh, really interesting to read through everybody's questions. So we're gonna, do a breakout room um, and review the questions by column and then try to put them into categories in the breakout rooms um, based on who we think would be best for the committee to hear from in terms of an answer to those questions. Um, and then we're going to come back into the main room and talk about that process and uh, kind of look at the spreadsheet. I, I can do another screen share of the spreadsheet, what it looks like. Let's see here. So can everybody see that? So the spreadsheet, this is the, this is the responses. So all of your, all of the questions that you plugged into that Google form are now here um, under these five columns. So, uh, I was just thinking that I would assign five random breakout rooms um, and depending, maybe I can just do four uh, depending on how many people end up per breakout room because some people left question five blank. And then the idea would be to start to, start to go through and drop the questions into these tabs down below. And I've come up with a couple of tabs just based on reading through the questions. So some of them are obviously, you know, should be answered by Superintendent Bone Steel. Um, some of them are, are more directed towards other uh, MRPS staff. Um, some of them really need to be answered by the Montpelier Police Department. Some should be answered by students or community members. Um, some of them seem to be, maybe would be appropriate to be answered by other schools, maybe principals or superintendents of other school districts. Um, and then I left a category for experts, uh, organizations, and other. So, and, and in each spreadsheet, there's, you can drop the question in here and then sort of brainstorm who might be the best person to answer this question. And then when we come back together as a group, we can start talking about um, potentially sharing the workload of going out to these people to, uh, to gather the answers. Um, there was some discussion around how much public testimony we should be bringing into the committee and how many people um, we have time to like listen to. 
And so one idea that we had was potentially going out, seeking answers to the questions and just bringing the answers back and that the people don't necessarily need to come to the committee. And I think for future work down the road um, in January through March uh, for that level of work, it would be good to hear from people if they're willing to come and talk to us and present to us. But I think for um, the sake of, you know, the first step could be just to go out, ask, um, ask people the answers, get, get answers to the questions and then bring them back to the committee. So Amanda, like you had talked about gathering some feedback from the social workers and guidance counselors. And I noticed that some of the questions were definitely directed towards that group of people. So it's possible that you could be our liaison to get those questions answered by the social workers and guidance counselors, and then just bring those answers back that the social workers and guidance counselors themselves wouldn't necessarily have to attend the meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so then we'll come back and we'll talk about, Anna, yeah. I just had one little, little thought that um, some of the questions look like we might want to find multiple sources for responding to them. So that just to keep that in mind, when we do our breakout groups, Yep. Um, we don't, they don't have to only live, I think, in one category. Absolutely. And um, yeah, so I don't know the best way to do that. You could drop the question into uh, multiple sheets. Yeah, both tabs. Like, multiple tabs. Yeah, I was, um, I just was, I just started it that way, but I, I'm open to suggestions. You know, I wanted to keep it, we have to keep it you know, I thought about pulling it out and putting it onto a different type of document, but we have to keep our documents, our running documents um, public. So that one is already shared out. Um, so yeah, but feel free to like create more tabs or drop a question into multiple tabs or under the, under the um, column where it says who should best answer this question, you could make a list of multiple people there. Um, so then the plan is to come back together and if there's any additional questions that we want to add at that time, we could start looking at, you know, there's going to be some, some of the questions are duplicated and then uh, maybe in discussion, once you start talking about the questions, another question might arise so we can add more questions at that time and then try to break out the work um, so that each of us leaves with some responsibility to gather a couple of answers. Um, so I do want to, at the end, um, I want to talk a little bit, just give you, give you some idea of what Sue and Keisha are planning to do for the next meeting. And maybe if Keisha is still on with us, she can speak to that. Um, and then, you know, I would love to come up with a regular meeting time. So we can talk about that at the end of the meeting. I can tell you what the results were of the, of the survey that went out. Um, it hasn't been able to happen so far, but I'm hopeful that we can get some predictability in our meeting schedules. Um, okay, so um, does anyone have I, any questions? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think you had said in an email, just clarified that we are aiming to end by seven. The agenda, uh, did you resend the agenda? Maybe I have the wrong agenda open. The one I'm looking at um, from Anna's email still is ending at 7.30. So just if we need to adjust time somewhere, could you let us know? what those adjustments are. Okay, let me um, share the updated agenda. Yeah, sorry about that. There was a typo in the first um, agenda and that was just a miscommunication between Anna and I. Um, okay. So let's see, are we, are we on track? 548, not quite. <laughs> um, I did have one housekeeping item and um, I can let Tony speak to this a little bit, but uh, Tony for various reasons has decided to step down off of the committee. And so, you know, obviously Tony represents the Montpelier Police Department perspective in this conversation and that was part of the charge. And so I know that the school board wanted um, that perspective to be represented as part of the committee. And there, I've been speaking with Chief Pete about how to best um, fill, fill that seat moving forward for future meetings. Um, but I did, I also consulted with Jim Murphy, the chair of the board, and he says that indeed the school board needs to vote and make that replacement. So um, I'll let Tony speak a little bit to that, but then if there's any input on 
you know, what your hopes and dreams would be to move forward to make sure that we're representing the Montpelier Police Department perspective. Uh, sure. So first of all, I, I apologize uh, as well, because this, this work is so important to walk away from it. Uh, but in the direction um, that, uh, you know, I, where it's headed, it's really more important to have the direct perspective of the Mont active Montpelier Police Department. Uh, I'm the old retired guy now. Um, you know, and when I was first asked if I could just kind of pitch in, you know, assuming there was going to be like two meetings, but it's just provide a, more of an overview from either my time on the, both as the Montpelier Chief and working with our last two school resource officers and the, how the program evolved in Montpelier, but more specifically my work on the school crisis planning team um, for 10 years as the Chief's representative of the state of Vermont. And, but really um, as we build relationships and understanding, you know, what are the community expectations and the, the needs of, of, our, of, our, of our students, it really should be somebody um, that's directly part of the current Montpelier Police Department. And I, you know, I've had conversations with Chief Pete, uh, he agrees, um, but he also has some reservations too. Uh, I don't wanna speak for, for uh, Brian on that, but um, about making, you know, we doesn't wanna feel like, uh, you know, that there is any um, pressure on the part of the police department that, you know, whether to have an SRO or not, and ultimately, it is up to the school and in particular, uh, you know, Libby to make sure that whatever plans are in place for safety and, it, you know, for all hazards and all concerns, um, you know, the city of Montpelier and specifically the police department, they're, they're, you know, they're available and whatever is needed, whether it's information, um, support, and uh, they're at the ready. So, and, and with that, it's just, um, yeah, I don't think it's really right for me to speak on their behalf um, as we get into those relationship building. Thank you, Tony. Um, so is there any discussion on, you know, my gut is sort of to take Chief Pete's lead and let him tell me who he thinks is best to fill Tony's seat and then bring that to the board for a vote. But if um, any of you have any other suggestion or you wanna, I can open this up to discussion. Okay, so I'll, I'll plan to move forward that way. Um, I do wanna, I see um, that a member of the public, Beth, you've joined us and I just wanted to reopen it for public comment if there's anything that you wanted to say at this time. Okay. All right, so um, turns out we actually are on time with the agenda. So I read that wrong. Uh, agenda item two, so a reflection on um, the process and an update from the school board. So I think, um, I don't know which is best to do first, but I guess I'll, I'll give, I'll kind of blend the two. But the first, um, an update on the process, a reflection on the process, like kind of where, where we started, where we are now and where we're going. Um, I'm gonna plug into the chat, the two main, um, sections of the charge that dealt with deadlines. Um, trying to find, sorry, I should have it up and ready and on my clipboard. Um, here we go. So essentially by the end of December, what was written in the charge is that this committee will, I wanna actually quote it and not speak from memory, make a recommendation to the board on how to proceed with the student, uh, student resource officer position by December, 2020. I'm gonna put this into the chat. And that after that, we would provide a broader report on safety through the lens of our district's diversity, equity, and inclusion policy by March 2021. So, um, you know, Sue and Keisha have led us through a process where we've 
been able to go out into the community, reflect on our own values around visions and concerns of safety in the school. And the idea being that once we sort of know what some of our shared visions and concerns are, we can look at those through the lens of the school resource officer position and see whether that position is really serving those shared visions and concerns. Um, so we're still in the middle of that process. And, you know, there's been a lot of questions about whether this deadline is um, realistic for our committee to, to give a recommendation to the board. And I've been sort of going back and forth on, on my thinking of that and what that recommendation has to look like. I think initially I was sort of seeing it as a more binary black and white, like, yes, we think we should move forward with the SRO. No, we do not think we should move forward with the SRO one or the other type of thing. And I think we talked about it at the last meeting um, or two meetings ago where, you know, I've sort of evolved on my thinking on that. And I've talked to some school board members where, you know, I don't think the recommendation has to be anywhere close to unanimous or even that black and white. There could be lots of recommendations on a scale in between um, the, the yes or no SRO um, decision. And additionally, we've talked about during this committee um, that the committee was not ever intended to be a decision making body. So we've always known that our work is more um, more to provide guidance to the school board um, when they decide to make their decision on the SRO. So I do think that all the school board members really value everything that we've done in this committee and they want to hear from people. Um, but what I've been seeing is uh, at the school board, it feels like, you know, I, I was wondering, are we going to be able to do this by December, by the end of December? And I think that wherever we stand at the end of December, I think the school board will probably be ready um, to move forward on a decision one way or the other. And so it's, it's about how best to provide our feedback to them by the end of December. That's how I'm feeling right now. And, and I have some ideas about how to do that. Um, and it can definitely be individualized. You know, each of you is a, you know, all of you are so talented and, and intelligent and thoughtful, and you've been part of all of these meetings. And I think you're probably starting to develop some feeling one way or the other. And definitely after we get some of these questions that we all have answered, and after next week's meeting, hopefully you would be at a place where you would feel comfortable, you know, at least just taking your pulse on the issue of the SRO. Um, Emma, you mute, you're muted. You, something happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, where did I leave off? Hi, Pierre. Oh, that by the end of December, hopefully each of us will be able to articulate our position on where we stand with the SRO. Yeah. Okay. Go so, ahead. and then at the, at what happened at the last school board meeting um, last week is we had the budget presented to us. So the first draft of the budget, which is a long process. So this draft of the budget does not have to be set in stone, but in that first draft, they did reduce the amount um, of expenditure for the SRO line item in the budget. They reduced it and, um, and they earmarked it for school safety. So not assuming one way or the other, not assuming that the school board would make a decision one way or the other, but just earmarking it for school safety rather than earmarking it for school resource officer. Um, and then the idea being that whatever the balance above and beyond what they've put aside for school safety, the additional money needed would come out of the fund balance. So whatever, um, whatever the plan that is put in place for next school year around school safety, whether it involves an SRO or does not involve an SRO, the, um, the thinking is that it will probably need funding to support. Um, and so that funding would primarily come out of the fund balance for the next school year. And a big part of that decision um, 
and I can let Mia also give her input on this. But it sounded like to me, this is a very, very tight school budget year. And they're sort of looking for any areas to um, save some money. And so I think that the concept of like, well, we'll cover whatever is needed from the fund balance, which is basically like a savings account that the school district has that we've been putting savings in year after year. And we have a healthy amount of money in there. So they feel like they can fund whatever um, this committee and the board decides for a school safety plan for next year using fund balance money and then with an eye on the future and sustainability of that position, they would plug in whatever amount was necessary moving forward in future years. Mia, would you like to speak at all to? I think you covered it, Emma, thank you. Okay, um, does anyone have any discussion or question about the school board update? or the process and, and where we're at in the process and sort of. Yeah, can I, can I speak? Yeah. All right, so, you know, obviously this is something that, you know, I think is close to home for me uh, in a lot of areas. Um, and I, I thought about words, you know, that can express, you know, like about what's going on. So I want to start with the word fear. Um, like as a young black man growing up in the ghetto in Virginia Beach, Virginia, like um, we were always taught to fear the police. Um, and so as a, you know, as I grew up and, you know, started at Nellon Beach School, my first like experience with a police officer was in school, like the DARE officer. And I learned, you know, early on basically that, that it's different. Um, but I, I think that, you know, what we're doing, I like the process, but I think we're also setting a, a dangerous precedent, um, which, you know, I, I guess teaching a whole generation of kids to kind of like fear the police in, in a way. Uh, I think that's really important to discuss because it's like, I understand basically like, you know, I knew police chief um, and also um, chief faculties um, have wrote um, in their police message, basically, um, you know, things about what's going on in today's society. Um, and, you know, so, you know, and the police department is very clear that they want to support this community and um, in any way they can. Um, so I guess my first question is like, you know, we, you know, I'm a, I'm a data guy, right? I mean, so like, I don't think we have seen a lot of data uh, in regards to this study either or either way. But number two is, I don't think we've had any discussion with the police department and, and with concerns that we have. Um, you know, and I think that's a big part. I mean, you know, I think that the police department does a lot in my player. I understand, you know, like um, I always say, I live in two worlds uh, as a black man living in Vermont, but also as a black man married to a white woman having biracial kids in the state, right? So I see a lot of different points of view. Um, I think that it's important to kind of look at that basically, but we have had no communication with the police department at all, uh, which I think that it's important to kind of get their views and, um, you know, to, you know, help, you know, have them hear um, what's going on, basically. I believe in discussion and transparency. I mean, I think we're very transparent. I don't think we're having uh, a lot of discussion with um, parties involved and that, that party involved is big party, it, it's the police department. So thank you for hearing me out. Okay, so I'll just respond briefly, but if anyone else wants to respond as well, you're welcome to. Um, so Pierre, you were not, I don't, you were not present at the last meeting and then also you missed the beginning of this meeting. And we, so we did talk about the police um, perspective and how it will potentially be incorporated. Um, when, we, when we divided up by stakeholders to go out and get feedback and bring it back to this committee, um, the police department was not able to provide that feedback for last, week's meeting. Um, Chief Pete has since gone through and provided some feedback so that I can enter that into the matrix and that we can all have that perspective shared. But I think, um, you know, it's not necessarily a weakness of the design or the process, but just people's individual time and energy to put into this process and maybe some confusion about how the police perspective would be presented to us. Um, but also, I don't know if you've had a chance to review all of the questions that the committee members have formulated. So I think a lot of those questions are, will be appropriate for the police department to answer. And I think the answers to those questions might solve a lot of the concerns that you have. And to, to your point about data, I mean, that's been a big topic of discussion since May, since we start at the school board level, since we started talking about this issue around the SRO and, and policing in schools. And there, you know, there is a lack of local data, and um, it's not for it's not for a lack of interest in it and wanting to see it, 
but it has not been um, readily available in terms of numbers of incidences involving the SRO at the school district. You know, it's something that the school board has been interested in, and it's something that this committee is interested in, and, and that came out in all of the questions that people pre prepared for tonight. So, I mean, I think, you know, um, I think moving forward, data and police perspective, I think it all will be part of the process. It's, um, you know, we've been limited by time and vacations and, and people's schedules and all of that, but I have faith that we will hear those perspectives. And as a school board member, this is something that um, I discussed with Mia and Jim before, but as school board members, we've been present at meetings since May on this topic. So we've heard a lot of testimony um, from a lot, a lot of perspectives. Uh, since May. So, um, but what we realized was, oh, right, but the committee has not heard all of those perspectives. And I talked to Eliana a little bit earlier today about that. Um, there are, there are definitely pieces of information that, that need to be shared with the committee. Um, yeah. So agree and disagree a little bit. And just no, I, I love, you know, I, you know, honestly, you know, one thing about me as an administrator, basically, I mean, I, I obviously it's my job to kind of like, you know, look at everyone's perspective and, um, you know, and I see a lot, I hear a lot basically. And I think it's important to kind of have everyone's like lens at the table. Uh, and I totally respect what people are saying and what they're saying. How I mean, we all live in different worlds. Um, and, and like I say, I mean, I could be use the word proactive versus reactive, right? So I, I want to make sure that we're, you know, even if we do move forward and not have an SRO, basically, I guess my question is like, what is the plan after that, basically? So you mean like we can't just say, okay, let's take away an SRO position from the school, basically, and then as an administrator, basically, you know, if something happens, basically, what are we gonna do? What is the plan? So I, I guess you know, if the you know. Either way, basically, I'm here. I'm actually at a neutral party right now. Either way, I'll support whatever we decide to do as a board, as a school, whatever, as an administrator for school. But if we're going to do that, basically, if we're going to get rid of the SRO position, basically, what are we going to do in return? Basically, we can't just take something away and we can't just say, okay, let, let's insert a social worker in that position or, or whatever. Basically, we need to come with a comprehensive plan to make sure that we're all on the same page and that our students are getting what they need to be successful. Because again, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's about we. What are we doing for our community and our students? Uh, number one priority there, basically. So thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that piece up. I did, I don't know if when you join late, I'm not sure if you can see the chat prior to when you joined, but I did drop, drop into the chat the two deadlines that are in the charge for this committee. So the first is to make a, rec a recommendation to the board on how to proceed with the student resource officer position by December 2020. And I, I'm trying to sort of see how that will take shape over the next couple of weeks. Um, but, I, but where I'm landing is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a unanimous binary decision one way or the other. So we can talk about how best to, um, you know, voice our experience and uh, understanding of the position to this point, our experience on the committee uh, to the school board. And, and that's something that we can talk about at the next, I think Sue and Keisha are gonna guide us through that process at the next meeting. And then the second piece is what you just spoke to which is to provide a broader report on safety through the lens of our district diversity, equity, and inclusion policy by March, 2021. So that would be more like community um, values and how are those reflected in our discipline um, system at the school. So when something happens at the school, how do, we, um, how do our values around diversity, equity, and inclusion, how are those reflected in, in that? And I mean, there's only so much that the committee can do in terms of like, we're not going to be writing out a specific safety plan for the school. I mean, that's obviously up to the professionals in the building. Um, so yeah, you have a school safety committee and things like that, which you know all of us are part of. Kind of, so we understand that piece. Uh, like I said, I mean, I, I love the process. I mean, I understand why we're doing what we're doing, basically. I, but I just want to make sure that you know, it, you know, when we do this or, or whatever we decide to do, basically, I'll support 100%. I just want to make sure that we have something in place um, to make sure when we do move forward, basically. And that's all I'm saying. So. So I see that Susan has her hand up. I'm just going to say that we do have until March to discuss as a committee what to put in place, you know, whether if we decide to move forward, if the school board decides to move forward with an SRO, what does that look like? Because it will most likely look different than it does now. And so as a committee, we will discuss that. And then if the school board decides to not move forward with the SRO, this committee will talk about what that looks like, you know, and what, and what is going to be in place instead of the SRO. Susan? 
I just, I just wanted to clarify, I wanted to make sure I heard you correctly that you said that the school board would be making a decision by the end of December, um, even though they had earmarked the money for school safety, they would, they would be making some sort of a decision on how to move forward with the SRO position by the end of December. Did I hear that right? Well, I don't know that for a fact, but I think what I'm, what I'm getting, um, just the, the pulse that I've been taking from school board is that they are ready to proceed, um, you know, and I, and I think they want to hear from this committee and the individual members of the committee. But, you know, like I said, we always knew that the, the decision was ultimately going to be in the hands of the school board. And I think um, the, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I can't say for sure what, what the school board action will be. Um, but I think that we should plan as a committee, we should, we should plan according to that original deadline, you know, and then if they decide not to make a, make a decision fine, and we can provide further input down the road. But I do think that we should sort of proceed as a committee as if the school board will be ready to make a decision at the end of December or beginning of January. Um, and, and I really don't know. I mean, nobody set that, put that on the agenda. Nobody's talked to me about it. We don't know what the future holds, but I just, um, you know, after talking to Jim and after looking at uh, the committee charge, it feels like we at least need to prepare for that possibility. Sorry, Tony, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I just wanna kind of springboard off of what some of the comments that Pierre had stated um, and just kind of, you know, just, be open and honest from my, my perspective. Uh, you know, it's interesting, there's been a lot of talk, for example, around, um, you know, is the SRO and the relationship to enforcement, to punishment, if you will, uh, that kind of accountability. And quite frankly, when I think about the SRO, everything that we've done in Montpelier, um, things that have not been even, we even, even scratched the surface on, as far as what it means to be a resource officer. In other words, when the, you know, when the evening shift, you know, is that is is called um, to to a house for whether it's a, a domestic violence, an overdose, whatever the case may be, and the child's involved. The first thing those officers do is they reach out to the school resource officer to notify the you know, hey, this is what just happened last night, and so and so's home. Um, that we deal with poverty. Uh, you know, I shared these stories you know with Emma um, you know, uh, the other day, but just for example, uh, an SRO would. There'd be almost like a code if it, you know, if a if a student needed to, you know, was hungry, um, just say, hey, a, uh, you know, um, Corporal Moody or Corporal Nisley, um, you know, can we uh, can we meet? And it was taken to the cafeteria. Um, the the cases of, of of sexual abuse, child abuse, addiction, bullying, these things. It's always it's really um, and it's a, and it goes to the heart of restorative practice. It's focusing around the harm that's being done and 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 how we can help connect. Those. That's why it's called a resource officer. It's not just a cop in school to deal with traffic in the parking lot um, and whatever. The guns that have been even over in weapons over the years that have been, we've that we've been thwarted. Uh, kids have had guns in their backpacks. Um, so, so to Pierre's question about statistics, this was always a challenge for us historically too. How do we qualify and quantify um, everything that the SRO is in, involved in, um, and also with very strict juvenile confidentiality. HIPAA and FERPA, um, suicidal students over the years. You know, Matt Matt Nisley was, uh, you know, and he still is one of the department's, uh, you know, crisis negotiators. Uh, very well trained. I've heard training thrown out there. Cops need more training. What training? To specific that to the Montpelier Police Department. And none of these things I've heard of so far. But it's uh, but it's you're on the right track in terms of how do we how do you demonstrate what you get for your dollar, if you will. Um, and, and are we successful in that? And some of those issues are hard to quantify. And I just wanted to put that out there because these are so far, uh, I have not heard those specific discussions separate from also the relationships and the trust. So when there is a crisis on school grounds, uh, it's not a stranger. There's, it's already a well-oiled machine when, when resources are, are brought in to assist with whatever the crisis may be, um, as opposed to um, that. So I just wanted to put that out there and just thank you. I, I appreciate you both putting those ideas out there. I do, I do want to point out that most of what you just said is an answer to some of the questions that the committee members already have posed. So I think, you know, I'm, 
I'm also eager to sort of like get into the stories and get into the data and get into the reports from various stakeholders and understand how the SRO is used and look at that data. But, um, but I don't want to get into the weeds tonight at this meeting because we have the committee has taken their time to write a lot of questions and and so many of those questions um, the answers to those questions are the types of things that you're talking about and i think that the we will be building in time at the future meetings um, to address those questions and I, they weren't built into the agenda for tonight um, and i understand that it's it's frustrating to not be making like huge strides of, of progress on all of this and to be able to see the big picture all up front. And I've struggled with that myself. Um, if anybody, I, I would, I see that um, Beth, you have your hand up. I guess I'm open to opening up to public comment, but I just want to kind of keep it brief because I do want to get through our agenda tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wanted to take a moment to take a step back and just remember what the committee's charge is grounded in, which is the equity policy for the school district. So, you know, depending upon the framework in which you're having the conversation, how you come to a decision on what decision you make will change. And so first and foremost, I think the framework of this conversation is, does an SRO align with, you know, our policy, our current policy on the books around equity? And if not, what does? I mean, I don't, I think there's, lots of arguments to be made around where a police officer might add value to a relationship with a school district, but that doesn't necessarily look the way it does today in our schools. So just reminding folks that we should really be grounded in the conversation as a framework around equity rather than safety and relationship with police or um, whatever else. The other quick thing I'll just say is that police officers are not trained and are not the, the first responders to deal with poverty or mental health issues. And I would argue that most police officers don't see themselves as first responders to deal with mental health or poverty. And so if the, if the primary challenges in which police officers are coming into the school to address are related to issues around poverty or mental health or bullying or um, some of the other things that you mentioned, Tony, then the response to that should not be a police response. It should be a community and people-centered response. Um, so again, just recalling where we're grounding ourselves in and, and that is in the equity policy. Um, and, and I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, the Just Schools Initiative folks uh, might have varying opinions about how police involvement looks in school, but nobody at the moment is necessarily arguing that um, police don't have a role in society, at least in relation to this conversation. So um, just a, a quick reminder to ground ourselves in the framework of the conversation. And I really, Beth, thank you, because that's exactly what we've been saying in law enforcement. We're not the first responders should be for these those issues. Um, all we end up being, though, is when the, these things unfold, sometimes we're the person that connects the dots sometimes. And that's that's why it's called the resource. But but you to thank you. I mean, I've been saying that in most chiefs for years. We're not the first responders for those social norms where we have not efficient, sufficiently funded. Uh, mental health and other uh, resources, like whether it's food insecurity or housing. So thank you. Okay, I want to make sure that if, you know, if anybody else has anything pressing to say, you're welcome to say it. And then we're going to move into the um, breakout rooms for to look through the questions. Okay. So I'm just going to do um, four random breakout rooms. And the uh, one of the rooms will be responsible for looking at columns four and five. And I'm going to give us 10 minutes. Um, I am going to put public into the rooms as per public meeting, open meeting law.
Okay, you all should have editing privileges now. Okay, looking a lot better now with the breakout rooms. <laughs> All right, we'll see you back in a little bit. Hello, Eliana Hi. and Caitlin. Hi. And I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. Um, be part of this or not, yeah. right? I should just listen. I don't know. I I'm not the person to ask that question. <laughs> yeah. uh, Eliana, do you know what number did she tell us what column we're looking at? Um <laughs> I mean we're room one, so room I would one. Just... Okay, so let's do <laughs> column one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. I'm guessing it's just you and me, and then we have two um observers. And so we put them in this. I other... feel like can jump in. <laughs> Happy to jump in. Yeah. I don't see what you're looking at though. Oh. Um, Are you able to share it? And the, is there a chat? Okay. Me, I can um, share it in the chat with you. Copy. And I only have view only, Eliana. Do you have um, editing privileges? Um, yes. Um, what's your email? I'll write it. I'll write it in the chat. Oh, no, I just gave I just shared the doc. Oh, cool. I see it. Thank you. Um, but do you Eliana, can you edit the document? Um, oh, I don't think so. I'm trying to like yeah. that. Let me try it again. Cause then we can't do this if we can't edit it. We could also just like write on a piece of scrap paper for now. Like, oh, I think we can edit it now. I just refreshed. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll just look through all the questions in column one and then we will decide where we want to put them and we may want to put them in multiple places. Okay. Okay. So would you want to just read that first question? And then talk about it. I can just read it out loud. Um, okay, go ahead. What are the current rules and protocols for the SRO's presence on school grounds? Do they have open access to school buildings at any time? Um, do they only show up when called by a staff member or administrator? Are all areas of the school open and accessible to the SRO? Okay. Um, I think that could just go right to administration. Um, do you think to um, live to Superintendent Bone Steel or to somebody else? Yeah, I think she would be a, a good good one for that. I agree. All right, I'll put her. I'll put the question in there. Okay. So um, I don't have access to the document. I requested it, but. Who knows if I'll get it. Um, are you deciding, is there like people that you're supposed to ask these questions to? Yeah, like we're just deciding, Caitlin, who do we think would be good to answer those questions? And she's, okay. Emma's given us a whole list of folks, but if you have thoughts other than the superintendent. Um, no, that's great. That's a good person to ask that question to, I think. Okay. I'm just gonna share my screen right now. Like You could also ask oh, any principal. Like, I'm just, can you guys see this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, um, yeah, I would say any of the principals, too, would be able to answer that. Okay. I mean, the police department could answer it, too, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. there's got to be some, like, policy sheet that just says it right there. Like, I think we might have had access to that at one point or something. But. Okay. Um, all right, um, should we go back? Do you want to go back to the next for, um, to the form responses? Yeah, so oh, you're there. could an SRO be present in the schools without a firearm? Would the MPD be okay with that? Hmm. I mean, I think that would go for like the superintendent for the police. 
or like the police department too because yep. like they're they're on their job at that time and that's like probably part of what's expected of them yeah absolutely. yeah i was gonna say the police too okay so let's go to the police and to bone steel we're gonna where should we mark those that we've put them in multiple spots do you want to mark it i'll mark it right on the front page here well can you oh right you can yeah i don't know if that makes any sense though could we just put a star and then like on the question on here or something oh yeah you just did okay. or i can also say that's at the mpd just make a note that it's in the MPD section too. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, how often and what are some of the common reasons the SRO is called up? Uh, um, I think see. that could just go to the MPD or again, or I would say the staff. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, that's true actually. Yeah. Because I feel like they're the ones who actually decide if they need it or not. Yeah. Or like Jen, Jen Wall. Like, yeah, I was going to say like it would more probably, I think, go to like staff and then like to like administ building administrators. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe it like moves up like first yeah, the staff requests admin. it. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to say staff, building, administrators, I know, school counselors, um, and social workers. Yeah. Okay. It would be so nice to hear from, like, a former SRO or something. Like I agree. Yeah. I'm hoping that they can do that for us sooner than later. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, can the SRO be present in the schools and not be armed? Okay. We already have that. Do we have that one? Okay. That's sort of a re repeat question. Awesome. Um, it's unclear to me why the SRO position is part of the school budget in the first place. If this is a necessary role that requires an officer, then why isn't it included in the police department budget? Huh. I think that's um, a lot of people's question. <laughs> yeah. I would maybe ask Libby. The school board and Libby? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, school board. Yeah. Okay, so back to Libby. She's got lots to answer from us. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of the things are just like logist. Like I don't know. Like she like to be able to roll them out pretty. Easy. Okay. Yeah, like she probably has a lot of these answers just on paper, ready to go. Yeah. I'm sure she does. Yeah. And then is school board down here? Um, as an option, it's that not. could be under like superintendent maybe um because she i don't know oh it looks like other people are using that um like people are saying superintendent comma school board yeah oh under super okay yeah okay great oh why isn't my thing writing okay Was that the last one? Uh, oh, definitely not. Um, <laughs> what is the scope, all facets of the SRO role across the district presently, we need details. If the board chooses not to have an SRO, how can we be assured that a responding officer has the training not to over respond to an escalated student who seems out of control and have the time to remain in a support backup position? Oh no. <laughs> Dang, that I was a really good one. Very similar. Back to um, position. Uh, okay, what should we do about this? Copy. What is the scope of the SRO's rule in the district presently? I, I honestly think that's Libby. It's principals. It's the police department. Police. Yeah. I'll put it in all of those. Yeah, that's like their tr specific training. Yeah. Super, and then I'll just say that's going into uh, MPD and 
school. Principles. Okay, I'll put it in there. And then other schools, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I think so. All right, are we out of time? Yeah. <laughs> so do people want, should we just go right back into breakout rooms? Yeah, we were quite halfway through. <laughs> okay, let's go right back. I think they're, they stay the same. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be bad if it wasn't. <laughs> we were just getting going. All right. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, yay, we're all back. <laughs> um, okay. Oh. All right. Um, I think the next one is, I think it would be good for the committee to have a detailed understanding of what the SRO does beyond the basic drop job description. Um, I think we kind of have that already, don't we? Yeah, I think we know, like even based on what like Tony just said earlier. But I think in some of the other questions that we've, that have been yeah. asked, like what yeah. is the scope of the SRO's role? Right. Okay. Um, okay. What kind of training do MRPS staff currently have that the SRO has gone through to serve our students? Um, I don't really um, think it comes from the staff but that's just, I think it's kind of been addressed anyway. You think that question has? Yeah, like I think it kind of goes with making up a, a police position more like fitting in a school setting. Like, I think that's kind of what the question is asking and that's, we already have it, I think. I'm just looking back at the questions. Because this one's asking more about the staff, like the, the people in the school, like could they have be trained? Yeah, oh, oh, like oh. what training does the staff have? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think this would go more to like school administrators and the superintendent. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's like what de-escalation looks like in a classroom. It could of. be, yeah. Okay. It could be. Um, so that's the superintendent and then I'm going to put it in other schools for school administrators. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, how do schools communicate with parents about the resources that are available to them, such as the social worker, the guidance counselor, the SRO? Is it a need to know basis or upfront communication? I mean, again, Libby or staff. Yeah, I think maybe more like school administrators. Yeah. And staff, I guess. But the administrators are the one that would ultimately have the say. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put that in um, other schools for school administrators. Yeah. Or I don't know now. I, I feel think like... that's more for our school. Like, I mean, Do you I mean could... the other MRPS staff? Is that what you mean? Yeah, I'm confused. I'm going to put it in there. I've been putting stuff in other. There's this tab on the bottom that says other schools. And I've been putting like school administrators type stuff in there, but I'm not sure that I'm putting it in the right spot. <laughs> I think that for other schools, like we've been interested in other districts that don't have an SRO uh, and like what kind of restorative practices they have in place instead. Okay. Um, and we're just like, I don't know, looking at what they're doing. But you, Eliana, I'm totally cutting what I put in there and putting it into other MRPS staff then. Oh, my other yeah. Yeah, I think awesome. that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. I'm all good now. Okay. 
Um, are we good about this question? Yeah. All right. Um, if students are parents and our staff are truly afraid or uncomfortable by the presence of an SRO, shouldn't that be considered something to be dealt with? Is it reactionary to simply eliminate the SRO position? These are really good questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that that just kind of shows the importance of our committee as we're like making a transition into like a different or actually no, if if we decide to like transition into um, like more restorative restorative work, it's where it's kind of like we aren't just like eliminating the position with like with nothing there. We're kind of just like holding it in a different space. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think so many of these questions are about like open communication too. Yeah, yeah true, true, true. I don't really know who answers this question. <laughs> uh, a lot of people, I suppose. Students, parents, staff. Yeah. yeah. I think it's like, it's hard because our survey, like it was just like safety in general and we couldn't really ask this specifically, but we got some responses about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're right. Students, parents, and staff or community, students, community, and staff. Yeah. And there's also been like the testimony that Emma mentioned um, for the board that's been happening since May. Um, there's been a lot of like personal stories from marginalized communities that, that the committee hasn't heard yet. Um, and I think that those could kind of answer that question. Um, I think Emma was going to share them with us at some point. Yeah, I think those answer the question, but it doesn't answer the, like, how does the school make sure that these things are communicated? Yeah, that's true. Do you think I should put this into, like, community members? Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know if they have the power to actually, you know, they, they do to some extent, right, to, like, move this conversation forward and you know, with the school board, but. But the school is the one who needs to make. It's like transparency with, within the school, like from yeah. administration and like. So it's really like the school administration and students. Yeah. You know, can you make it? Okay. Um, so next, are we almost done, Eliana? Let's see. Gosh, I think there's like 16. There's Tulia. There's 16. Oh my gosh. Oh no, 16 altogether. We're on the 12th one right now. Okay. Um, how many staff who work directly with the SRO feel the position is an invaluable resource for the school? Okay, I'm putting that staff. In. Staff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one's clear. Yay, nice <laughs> so I'll set staff, administration. But not even administrate. Oh, no. I guess administration, but they not Libby. Work for the school. No, no, I didn't put it into a superintendent. I just put it into staff, administration, like school, at, like principals. That's what I meant. Um, guidance, social workers. I think that like administration has a very, very important perspective in this question because yeah. the ones that are contacting them and the ones that are like really like dealing with the, the, the problems that come up. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what kind of crimes has our SRO dealt with? How would those situations have gone differently if a random PO had been assigned to be involved? What kind of crimes, yeah, has SRO dealt with? How would those situations have been? So I wonder, this is for the police department, but it's also for the schools, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think like administration- have that data. Cause it's like, yeah, I think it's confidential within the administration, so they would probably know. All right, so I will say that would be like school administration, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the police. Okay. Um, okay. Three more. <laughs> uh, will students be harmed if the SRO position is eliminated? How do we weigh out harm done because of the SRO versus? Mm. Oh my god! Uh, versus 
harm done because the SRO is not in the schools? Um, students is how about the stu asking the students how they feel about that? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I and I staff, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I'll put that in staff and students. And the last one, the next one, I think we've already done. And then the last one I think is police. Okay. As I rush to get us through this. <laughs> nice one. Yay. Nice job, everybody. Thanks so much. Caitlin, awesome. thanks for helping us out. Thank you. I'm happy to help. Okay, we are not staying on track for time as per usual. <laughs> so I did, it looks like people pretty much got through their column of questions and at least populated the spreadsheet. Get some thumbs up on that. Okay. We just had one question left. So we're, we're close. Okay. I don't think, I'm not advocating we go back to our breakouts. Okay. Um, so my hope was to um, try to brainstorm who would be best to answer these questions. And I think we've kind of done that um, in terms of putting it into the tabs and then to, to divide the work up among committee members of trying to go out and collect answers to these questions. All of the ones under the superintendent tab are going to be forwarded to Libby and she's planning to attend the December 17th meeting. Um, and as part of her presentation, she will be answering questions. So that part is sort of done for us. Um, any thoughts or ideas of how to, how we might break up this work? I think that you, since she's already like broken this up into groups, um, I, I think, you know, just, you know, the groups that we're in, basically we take those questions in that group. Um, it'd probably be a lot easier because, you know, we've already started the process. Now we, we kind of get to work and kind of get those questions out there to um, the stakeholders. That's just my opinion. I like that thinking. Does everyone else feel comfortable with that? So it would be whatever stakeholder group, you know, you're representing on the committee. Um, you know, there, there are obviously like a few missing groups. So there's community members, um, there's MRPS staff. So that would be Susan and Amanda. And then the superintendent category, some of those have other admin, or you might want to look through, uh, Pierre and Jen would have to look through the superintendent column a little bit. Maybe not. Yeah, a couple. And then the, um, other MRPS staff tab for administrators, for administrator questions. Um, and then the Montpelier Police Department, I can forward those questions on to Chief Pete. And then students, um, Zach and Ileana and Edie would take on those questions. And then the community members only one question for community members. <laughs> so that's an easy category. So then there's the other schools. Um, there's several questions in here. There's six questions in the other schools category. Um, so maybe we could break up that work between um, Catherine and Will and, um, sorry, I'm, my brain is not functioning. Yeah. And Joan, yeah. So we could do. Would you feel comfortable reaching? I'm not sure how that would work to reach out to other schools about how they. Most of these questions are pretty similar. What are alternatives to SRO involvement? Um, what models are there from other school districts that do not have school resource officers? So I mean, yeah, like, one thing I, I used to do, you know, when you know, when I was writing, um, like 
in the handbooks for us, basically, it's like I wanted to know what you know different policies were, like you know dress code, for example. So I would I would reach out to um, other schools and say, hey, you know, please tell, tell us about your dress code and, and things like that. So I, I think that if we could do that, basically, the same kind of questions, hey, you know, like you know, we're, we're researching or looking at um, you know our astral position, you know, and, and trying to make decisions, you know, can you tell us about like what the advantage is of not having an astral in your school, basically, and, you know, what are you doing in replace of that? So I think those questions, I mean, I'll be, I'll be willing to kind of do that piece myself, honestly. Yeah. Mm. Um, I wonder if, you know, we can sort of, I mean, I want to leave tonight with everyone feeling like they have something to do between now and the next meeting. Um, so there's also a bunch of questions under other uh, experts, organizations, et cetera, et cetera. So we could have Joan and Will and Catherine split those up. Um, and then maybe one of you could, one of the three of you could also reach out to schools to, to get some perspective on how, um, what some alternatives to SROs are, those questions that are listed in the um, other schools column. But then I like the idea of, I mean, I think Jen and Pierre, it makes sense for you to hear those stories as well. So reaching out to, I, I know that um, the Harwood School District, Stowe, Northfield, Williamstown, U32, all of those schools do not have SROs. So those would be good schools for you to reach out to. And maybe because you're a middle school administrator, it might be good to reach out to Crossetbrook or you know, the middle schools um, in those districts. I think it'd be also good to reach out to schools that have had SROs. I don't know if this is in our, if there's anywhere, but has have recently eliminated the SRO position, or I don't know if that's out there. I know Essex is on, in process, but, but yeah, there's a couple. Um, I'm sure Just Schools Initiative could help us with that. I think they've done some of that legwork already. Um, so how does that sound? Yep, we're getting Winooski in the comments. Um, I'm also happy to help with that work um, since like other experts involves multiple yeah. outreaches just to help balance the load. And I would also be happy to reach out to other districts and as a mm -hmm. member of the school, like as a member of the school board and or in conjunction with Pierre and Jen. Yeah. Uh I also want to just caution. I mean, I know that we talked. I mean, we just said Winooski and you know um, South Oldham schools. Um, those schools are, are a lot bigger and, and look a lot different um, from you know our community. Um, you know, so their use of the SRO is a lot different. I just I know that because I was a teacher for a long time in, in that district in the South Oldham school district. So I just think that um, you know just have a conversation. And yeah, I mean, Barry, you know those districts. We say yeah, like I, I think that Washington County and the surrounding areas is important. Um, but like Chittenden County is. This is a whole nother ball game. I think also Amanda's point was to try to gain perspective around um, how did a school handle that transition from relying on systems that were built around an SRO to not relying on systems that are built into creating new systems. And I'm not sure how many of those schools have actually gone through that process yet. I think these are pretty relatively new decisions that have been made in our state. Um, but I know there's definitely schools who have done that. Like I know Portland, Maine is a big one. Um, and they did that, a, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago. So they probably have some more information in terms of what that transition looked like. And my background training is mostly in the restorative practice, uh, SEL things. And I know Northville has an incredible um, SEL restorative practice program, um, you know, and they don't have a school resource officer. So, I mean, I would be really anxious to kind of get in and see what they're doing because they're doing some really incredible work over there. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of struggling with like how to actually make these assignments. Does anyone have any great ideas? Partly I have a question, Emma, is, is what the expectation is for what we're reporting back on the um, seven, at the next meeting, because that for me would shape like how are we coordinating amongst ourselves if we're going to be splitting up these questions? Do we need to have another meeting to like figure that out? What What is, do we have any sense of on the 17th, how will we be sharing what we've gathered. Okay, Keisha is um, commenting. She says, that sounds to me like a useful component for next meeting, and we'd be happy to help compile information about the other school's actions. So I think, um, you know, hopefully the expectation in my mind was that between now and next Thursday, um, December 17th, 
that we would be able to bring back some answers to these questions and, you know, ideally bring back answers to all of the questions. But if there's some questions that are left unanswered, we can certainly explore those answers at a future meeting. Um, so, I mean, Libby will certainly be prepared to answer all of her questions. And then in terms of like reaching out to another school district, like if we divided up different school districts or different questions, um, I think it would make sense to divide up school districts so that we're not all calling the same people. So if, you know, Pierre was gonna call Northfield and Crossett Brook, then maybe somebody else calls um, U32 or uh, Stowe, right? And then you would try to get some answers to the questions and then bring those back to the next meeting. So I will call U32 and cross the, uh, and cross the book. I uh, don't feel across the book, sorry. That's faulty. <laughs> So I can take notes. I mean, Joan, does that answer your question or no? Did I not answer your question? Um, I'm just trying to get like, I'm like literally trying to create a work plan for myself in my head. And it's a little bit trick, like trying to figure out, try to do that in eight minutes seems difficult, especially if we're trying to coordinate with one another around the questions and who's reaching out to who. I don't know if this yeah. subgroup, particular subgroup might just need another 20 minute meeting where we can really look at the questions together and figure out who, well, who, okay, who's taking this question and who are you asking it of? Um, the other, you know, cause the other ones seem a little more straightforward. Like the students have their questions, they can just go. Um, well, one that I also thought, one that came up in our, um, in our breakout room was I agree, Beth. With other, you know, she's hundred percent right. Yeah. So we, uh, one of the questions was, I would like to hear experiences from our community members and students who have been referred to the SRO, in particular, people from marginalized communities. And I think that that's a really big question. I know that we have heard from um, with people's individual stories and. Uh, Beth commented earlier in the chat that those are available via Orca Media and previous board meetings. They're all recorded. So we can try to shuffle through those. And the board, I think the board members could bring those back um, and recount some of those stories for you. But also, I think just if people have heard stories from their community, or you could reach out and ask, but there's not, you know, there's not a lot of data compiled around this role of the SRO. So we don't have a list of incidences and people um to reach out to so i think that one that one is more of a broad like everybody should bring their feedback on that one and it's not going to be one person going out and trying to gather stories um, i'm seeing some more activity that says there should be consistency in what questions are asked and how to remove individual bias yeah i'm trying to envision what the meeting will look like right so Libby's going to speak and answer her questions. And then like, we're gonna share the information we've gained in the next week. <laughs> like we have a week to gather this. Yeah, so that's, um, the next meeting is gonna be facilitated by Sue and Keisha. And so I'm not sure, Keisha, if you're ready to talk about, you know, what your thoughts are and what the next meeting might look like based on this process. Well, I don't want to sort of derail the end of your meeting and apologies for my soft clothes here, my hoodie. Um, but I was listening the whole time I was in a small group with Joan and Emma and others. Um, I think my big takeaway that I just wanna reflect back is, and this may make me sound biased in a particular way, but I don't have a sense that 12 years ago in Montpelier or in other communities where it started to be the case that an SRO was put in place, there was this kind of thoughtful community process and you all are giving people that for the first time. And so, you know, I think you should really celebrate yourselves and what you're doing to try and give people a voice in, um, you know, what school safety looks like, which is a very emotionally charged conversation. And I really appreciate Pierre bringing some of his personal feelings around this. You know, Emma and I have talked about that um, as well, because for people of color, it's a particularly um, emotional topic. And, you know, Pierre, I just really applaud that you're 
trying to sort of weigh that um, alongside your role in the school. So that all said, I really heard you all. I think it's um, an impressive undertaking that you're engaged in. Um, what I'm hearing that would be really useful for next meeting um, is to have as much data in, a, in as concise a form about what this SRO is doing um, in the school district, wherever that data exists. And, and what I'm also hearing is maybe to try and leave out um, things that can't be litigated in the meeting, like you know data that isn't complete. Um, but it may be helpful to talk to Emma and um, Eliana and Edie and anyone else who's, who wants to take a leadership role in figuring out what information is going to be helpful to present to the group that can be digested in a way that it seems somewhat objective. Um, and second, you know, I am hearing that it's, it is, this is a time of reckoning for a lot of schools across the state, and it is helpful probably to know what kind of paths they're taking um, and to sort of see if we can compile that. We're happy to help. Um, you know, I wonder if we can talk to Emma and some others about which schools and sort of see if there's some duplication or there's a way to just take like three case studies, perhaps. I'm just trying to sort of think about is there is there a way to narrow it down so we're not really all over the place with that. And finally, you know, one thing that we haven't really had a chance to dig into and I was listening for is does this group want to try and make an up or down decision on the SRO or do you want to see what you can agree on maybe, which are some principles that you want um, school safety to sort of operate under and report that back to the school district and then be able to focus on what does school safety look like in a way that meets the equity principles and standards and is holistic. And the only caution I would share is that you know, having a kind of up or down decision on the SRO when it, when, you know, when it may be just a recommendation to the school board may build some distrust in the group that makes it hard to have that bigger conversation about what school safety ends up looking like. So I just want to, you know, put that out there that there could be a consensus process, there could be an individual process, there could be an up or down vote, there could be let's just figure out what we agree on. Um, but I would hope at the end of the day that you can still spend the next three months or so talking about how do you envision school safety in a way that meets the needs of all students equitably. And, and you know, I just want you all to, to be ready for that. And I'm sad we're losing um, Mr. Fakus. Um, and at the same time, I, you know, behind the scenes, I think Emma did an amazing job trying to talk about some things that are really complicated dynamics. Um, but we really, you know, it, the police department should be part of the conversation about what, what school and, ca and campus and community safety look like. Um, so we are, you know, actively trying to see if we can get another voice and one that represents the current police department. Um, and, you know, there is this sense that that would be unwelcome. And I've just tried to articulate as someone who's been an observer that I have not seen anything that would make me think that that was unwelcome here. Um, and so I'm trying to emphasize that because I, I think the police department needs to be part of this conversation or you know, when, when will they be part of a conversation about school safety, um, you know, if, if not now. So I appreciate everyone being really welcoming to that perspective uh, and trying to hold this complexity. And I hope that made sense. I, I just also want to add basically that I think Beth, you, you, you made a good point. Um, I would love to kind of, um, if it's okay with the committee, basically sit with um, you know this just schools initiative and kind of create questions, um, you know, so we can kind of talk to other schools uh, in regards to the SRO position. I, I think that you said, I mean, I think that you know many lens make like work, um, and it'd be easier for all of us to kind of sit together. Um, you know, like, you know, not sit virtually, but virtually sit together uh, and like and craft questions so we can ask schools um, that make sure that we're getting all the answers and we're all very comfortable in that process. Are you okay with that, Beth? I'm sorry, I, don't we already have questions for schools? That's what we just spent, right? Like these committee questions. I, I feel like the committee spent a lot of time um, thinking, you know, and maybe there, maybe these aren't complete and there could be other questions additionally, um, but there are questions here. And I feel like may, it, it probably would make sense, you know, making sure that whoever's asking these questions understands the, the question as their phrase so that we can go out and like 
um, do our research or talk to whoever we need to do need to talk to and understand what the question is trying to get at. But we do we do have this starting point, right? Um, yeah, I think um, I'll let Beth speak to it, but she had made a comment in the chat about um, making sure that the way we ask questions are removing individual bias. So I think it's really great for Pierre to reach out to her to maybe just sure. consult on, so do you feel like if I ask the question this way that it would remove individual bias? But Beth, I'll let you speak to that. Yeah, I think it's important, so. Yeah, I, I was just trying, I, I can't see the question because I don't have access to them, um, but I was just trying to note that, you know, you know, having done survey research in my past, when you ask a question, you need to make sure that it's phrased in such a way that um, you're not leading somebody to an answer, not leading to pro-SRO or anti-SRO, but that it's just sort of an objective and unbiased framed question. So people's answers are reflective of what they believe and not how you led them to answer. Agreed. Okay, so um, what if we sort of plan this the same way that we did with the um, stakeholder feedback, which is uh, I will email you um, sort of your, your marching orders, your assignments, and then in your smaller groups, you can consult with each other to decide you know, who takes which questions and who goes to which schools. Um, right now I have notes for you know, other MRPS staff would be collectively handled by Pierre, Jen, Amanda, and Susan. The MPD questions are gonna be directed to Brian, Chief Pete. Um, the student questions are going to be handled by Eliana, Edie, and Zach. The community questions will be handled by Catherine, Will, and Joan. The other schools, I think this might alleviate some of your concern, Joan. Maybe we can take that on um, between Jen, Pierre, and Mia, and I can take on the other schools questions. And then the expert organizations, et cetera. I think that could be sort of split. I know that, um, Will, you had emailed the group. Is Will still here? Where, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking all around the screen. Um, you had emailed us some information from an organization. And I just wonder, I think it was Vermont Legal Aid. But I wonder if you might have an interest in, in helping with reaching out to experts and organizations. I can do that, certainly. Um, it looks like there's four questions on that. So, um, I think potentially, you know, um, I can help with that as well. And maybe Mia, so maybe that can also be a school board and then plus will category. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? So Mia and Jim, um, and will, and I'm definitely happy to reach out also to Just Schools Initiative because I know that they've already done a lot of the footwork to reach out to organizations and get those perspectives. So I'll find out, you know, who they feel we should reach out to. Does that sound okay, everybody? So you would, so I will summarize this in a follow-up email. But, um, but Joan, so you and Catherine and Will would be looking at the tab for community members, the community members tab, and then you would div be dividing up the questions. So you would take responsibility between the three of you to figure out how to best divide those questions. Yeah, there's only one question in that oh. section. <laughs> um, let me just go back to, I thought I saw more get added. No, nope, you're right, there's only one. Okay, so this is a broad, this is a big question though. This was the question that we talked about, about ex how to gather experiences from community members. So I actually think that that, even though there's only one question, I think that that's a really big piece of the puzzle here. Um, a lot of people have talked about, you know, they wanna know what is the lived experience of people with the SRO. And we've heard testimony from people through the school board lens. So maybe it's a matter of going back through some of those, you know, and, and um, I could certainly help point you in the right direction, going back through some of those important, you know, key meetings where we heard public testimony and watching the public testimony and then summarizing it and bringing it back to the group. And then obviously also just 
reaching out in any way that you can to the community to find out, find stories. Um, and I think that's actually one of that question to me is something that everybody probably sitting on the committee could be keeping in mind. And if you have any anecdotal stories um, that you've heard as a role, as your role of serving on this committee or um, in any capacity, you know, what are some of the, her the stories that you've heard around the SRO? I wonder if we could brought, like this question's pretty specific about um, students who have been referred to the SRO. And I wonder if we expanded a bit just to community members and students who have, you know, some kind of direct experience, interaction experience, um, yeah. you know, that they would want to share about having the SRO in, you know, in school rather than just a referral. Would that make sense to folks? Yeah. I think that makes sense. Does anybody disagree with that? To, to broaden that? Um, does everyone feel comfortable with the work that we are going to try to do before next Thursday? Um, I'd just like to say that I would very much appreciate help navigating the past recordings of previous school board meetings. It is um, I've gone looking for specific things before in meetings that I attended and <laughs> could not find them. So um, yeah. any guidance to finding this testimony would be very helpful. I can certainly help. Um, and Eliana asked about that too. Could earlier testimonies from school board meetings be shared with the committees? So I can try to go back through the agendas and find out, you know, Luckily, public comment usually happens at the beginning of each meeting. So when you go through and you watch the school board meetings, you can typically watch all of the public testimony pretty early on in the meeting. Um, but I know for a fact that there was like a few key meetings where we heard lots of testimony. So we can help point you in the right direction and give you links and maybe say, watch till, you know, 15, 27 minutes. <laughs> we can help with that. Yeah, I think this was a very productive meeting. Um, I appreciate you know the lens that everyone's bringing around, and I do agree with Kesha. I mean, I think that the work is daunting, um, but but I think that you know we we all have the the passion and the love of our of our students uh, to make a really good impact. So thank you everyone for um, just chiming in and kind of putting things together. It looks really good at this point. Thank you, Pierre. That's one thing that I keep kind of falling back on is this. You know, I know that everybody here and everybody in our community and every stakeholder has the best interest of the kids at heart. So that's a that's a good thing to sort of fall back on. Um, so my only other thing was about um, trying to come up with a regular meeting schedule. And based on the responses that we had from the survey that I sent out, Tuesday night sounded good to people to the to most of you. Now there was a there was an answer there that said like I might not be able to make some of these meetings so we know that we're not going to be able to coordinate everybody but in general like does Tuesday night sound like a good night to sort of move forward with I mean obviously next week it's Thursday and then I think after that we're breaking until January and then I would be maybe looking at Tuesday nights as a regular thing and I don't think we have to meet weekly I think we can probably meet bi-weekly a two-hour meeting bi-weekly um, and we can see how that pace feels to us at that point, since we will be sort of moving into more of the value statement, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion policy, and how and how we can use that as a lens to move forward. I agree with that, and I think that we'll also like the next meeting. We'll have a lot more data and like those boxes filled in. Um, and so after that, I mean, I think this is a the, I guess the tough part um, at the job, you know, right now, basically. But I think that like, once we come back with like all this information kind of filled in these boxes, uh, it's like downhill from there. So it'll be easier. Right now, we're just kind of like crafting and making that foundation. But once you do that, I think it'd be a lot easier for us um, moving forward. Anyone else want to speak to the, the trying to attempt a standing meeting schedule of Tuesdays every other week? generally okay with people. We'll find out when January comes. <laughs> yeah, Emma, I'll email you because I have every other Tuesday commitments. So okay. I'll let you know. So maybe you would be a perfect person for us to like decide when our starting Tuesday is. <laughs> that would be nice, but you don't have to do it around me. <laughs> okay. Um, 
All right. Wow. That was a big meeting. And I think we made a lot of progress. And I'm really looking forward to hearing the answers that you bring back at, at the next meeting. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. <laughs> Second. Okay. Will? I, but please tell me who said second, because I was looking away. It, it was me. Edie, okay, I'm supposed to write that down. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Susan? Aye. Tony? Aye. Mia? Aye. Joan? Aye. Eliana? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Amanda? Aye. Edie? Aye. Jay? <laughs> Hi. 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 Yeah. Um, and Pierre? Aye. And I just want to make sure, is Zach still on? Appears to be. Aye. OK. All right, thank you all for all of your attention and care to this topic. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you. I'm staying on, Keisha, in case <laughs> we need to discuss anything else. Emma, I had a quick question just yeah. about um, and a confession, I guess. Okay. <laughs> that my group, um, we started while we had Tony, he was answering some of the questions in our column and providing, uh, some, yeah. and providing some um, resources. Some like, oh, all of that is on the vermont.gov website in terms of like, you know, emergency procedures and stuff. So he was giving us stuff to do. Um, yeah, and we got wrapped up in that, and we did not move any of our questions into separate tabs. So is that ah, a, okay. is that a chunk of work? I mean that um, I should what look. Column, at what column were you responsible for? Um, we were group two. Does that mean it was column yeah. two? Yeah. Okay. Um, it appears to be mostly police questions. I can move those over. Um, uh, it's up to you. I mean, I'm happy to work with you. Do you want to go through them now? We'll let we could let Keisha go and we could go through them now. Um, sure, if that's okay with you. Together, just to make sure it's done. Do you two have any business? To... Yeah, Keisha, did you want to chat? Um, I can schedule something or I can just email you right now just to to see, you know, I think it would be good to get something on the calendar while it's fresh in our minds and have Sue involved so i will just email you and try to figure out a time in the next two days okay um do you want me to just quickly take a look at my work calendar and see what out of the next two days which one is better yes and i i have sue's calendar so we can see if that helps us um so wednesday it would have to be after five <laughs> thursday i could do after two Okay. What about 2.30 to 3 on Thursday? 2.30 to 3. Um, would we be able to do 3 to 3.30 instead? Yes. I have a commitment, but I think that's fine. <laughs> Sorry. I can, no, uh, I can always email if my other thing gets moved, but um, I feel like it's, it's a tight turnaround. <laughs> yeah. I will. I can make that work. All right, I'll let you two do your thing and I'll send you a calendar invite. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind, Will? Do you want to just do this? No, this is great. This is, if, if you don't mind, this is so much easier than trying to remember to do it later. Okay, so um, I'm going to go back to the form responses yeah. and you were column two. And so, um, Where did, do you know if you moved any of them? Uh, we didn't. We just got to, Tony started talking about a couple of them at once. So. Okay, so does the, so let's just start at the beginning. The, okay. the, um, 
right? It's does the SRO play any role in providing direct training to staff or administrators on issues of safety, i.e. leading workshops, providing guidance? I think that's a Libby question. Yes, agree. So I'll, I'll copy it mm -hmm. and paste it into Libby's spreadsheet. Okay. And some of these are duplicated, but. Yeah. So I see you're in the, what are current safety protocols for when student, staff, parent, intruder is threatening violence at the school? That was the question that Tony just directed us to the website. Um, um, I, I, to the Montpelier Roxbury School District website? Um, no, to the Vermont.gov website. Let's see, where's my notes? Um, um, I can, if we, if we put it on okay. under ex experts, I mean, I can. So I think we could put it under, yeah, we could put it under MPD, the Montpelier Police Department. Mm -hmm. We could also put it under Lib. I'm sure Libby could very succinctly explain what the protocol is. Sounds good. Um, do you want me to copy it? Um, sure, I got it. Superintendent. Boom, boom. Okay. Um, when, if the SRO is utilized to intervene, how often does that result mm, in either restorative practice or referral? That seems like MPD and one of the things we don't have data for. Is there anywhere else we should put it? Right, when or if the SRO is utilized. So did you, sorry, did you copy the, um, what are current safety protocols and you put that, you dropped that into different tabs? I put it in Superintendent Bone Steel. Okay. Um, is that what we were? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I, can, I can put it under experts. We can put it under MPD also and just see, you know, if Chief Pete has anything he wants to add to that. Answer, okay. answering that question. Oh, whoops. I, oh. And then when, if the SRO is utilized to intervene with incidents involving students' behavior actions, how often does that result in either restorative practices or referral to the MPD criminal justice system? Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I <laughs> this is also like a Libby and MPD question, I think. Mm. But it is, it has been tricky. I mean, I would love for them to speak in more generalities, you know, mm -hmm. around it and, and not feel like it's a FERPA violation to say, well, we typically get like two cases a month, right? something like that. Or based on my best understanding of it, we have about six or seven a year. <laughs> you uh -huh. know, and, and I would say that the majority of those are funneled through the, the restorative justice center. You know, something like like in broader terms, in broader strokes. Mm -hmm. But um, so, and I think they're kind of getting bogged down in like, well, I don't have the exact numbers and the times and dates when these things happened, and I don't think we need that necessarily. Yeah. Um, is there? So, do, do you want me to copy that in, or you I just did. Okay. Um, I put the, that one in both superintendent okay. and MPD. Is there a singular document that summarizes the work uh, the SRO currently does? So, well, you can put that into S into Libby's, but I know that the answer is no. Yeah, likewise. Um, I was also relieved to hear that Tony said that the uh, memorandum of understanding is in desperate need of upgrade. Everyone knows that. And I think if for no other reason, like that's a really great place to say to any community member who's wondering why we're having this conversation, it's like the memorandum of understanding is terrible and super outdated. And so if, if for no other reason, we need to revise that. Yes, <laughs> I was. that was a huge relief to me. I mean, I, I have my printout out of it is just marked up. My, yeah, I didn't print it out, but I have it all with comments highlighted in a digital format. Okay, so- um, Is the SRO- I'm just assuming that you're doing all the copying and pasting right I now. I am now doing that, yes. Okay. I'm in, um, we're in six, I think. Is the SRO answerable to school admin or are they empowered to make unilateral decisions without meaningful oversight? In other words, is the school system paying for a security guard and, or subsidizing the Montpelier Police Department public relations? Please note that I am not advocating for private hire of armed security guard by asking this question. So, I mean, I think again, that could be, um, we could hear from Libby and the police department on that. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? I would think so. I mean, it's a, it's a question for both. Who, because who's I know that they're not really answerable to Libby. <laughs> she does not, yeah. but I think it would be good to hear her, you know, for her to see that question, for her to answer that question. Mm -hmm. And then I think um, the police department can say, I mean, obviously the school has a relationship with them. 
and they will call them. And I know that a portion of their job FTEs is supposed to be, you know, um, in service to the school district, Mm. but she doesn't have any direct supervisory role over that person. Mm. And so then it would be, um, you know, what is the chain of command for that person? And what does that look like? You know, and when, when do they decide to come to schools or, or whatever, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, Who will have a- time to accompany a school employee to home or safety checks, home visits? So it's sort of a, it's more of a transition question than a. Yeah, I almost think that that can go to other schools. What do you think? I think so. I mean, it, if, if it connects to anything, it connects to how, for those who have eliminated the role, what, what has taken its place. How do you do home visits, safety checks, et cetera, you know, yeah. in the absence of an SRO, oh. how do you handle that? You, shall yeah. I rephrase it that way? Nah. Okay. <laughs> I'll figure it out. To the, the folks who are going to be reaching out. Um. If schools do not have an SRO, this is uh, eight, eight C. Um, what the relation would be? If schools don't have an SRO, what will the relationship be? Will police be trained to conflict mediation and de-escalation? Will they work to keep our students out of the legal system as best they can? Will they be able to communicate with school administration about incidents that happen in the community? Um, Okay, the first, the very first question seems like in other schools, at least. Um, I'd like to know if schools do not have an SRO, what the relationship between schools and the police will be. The rest appears to be a police question. I agree. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, oh good, I can get in there and copy and paste them separately. Other schools, done. Um, and all of the rest of it, police, MPD, done. For some reason that didn't stay in the cell, that's okay. Um, During public comment, um, it was mentioned that we should consider the SRO one person, likewise a guidance counselor is only one person. How will 45K go to provide services and students to students should the school board decide to eliminate the SRO position? Other schools slash other experts and organizations? Yeah, I would say because that really is up to the community and the school board Mm. and the school administrator. So, I mean, it's like if we have, if we decide to move forward without the SRO and we have $45,000 to spend on, on a replacement for school safety in the absence of an SRO, deciding what we do with that Mm $45,000 or if it is $45,000, maybe it's not quite $45,000. So like those questions will be future questions, I think for this committee and for the school board, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but it would be good to get input on, you know, what do other schools do and maybe what other, what are other organizations calling for to be done with, with those funds? I think you're right. Put it into other schools and Should we, that also makes me think we should make, not to give us more work, but um, another tab that is essentially questions for January through March, the questions that are for us, rather than for us to gather from the world. Okay. Um, Do you want me to quickly make a new tab? Sure. Thank you. for committee to consider. Um, Is the community really aware of what the SRO's job description is? Would that change the community's perception of needing or not needing this position? Is the public misinformed about this position and its effects on our students and staff? 
That's sort of rhetorical. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I think let's put that in for the committee to consider. <laughs> let's. <laughs> I can't think of a better place to put it. All right. What measures of accountability are in place surrounding the SRO position? Um, Libby and MPD? Yeah. Okay. How can we explain to stakeholders what the SRO position is really for? That's the same as the other one. Yeah, I think, I think it's important um, communication, transparency of, and communication. Mm. Thing that came up, I think it was in our last meeting with Jen Wall Howard, mm -hmm. when we were talking about stakeholder feedback and we were talking about communication piece and that if there is a feeling that community members, parents and guardians and students don't understand what the SRO does, then maybe that's a problem, you know, and, right. and we need to like address that misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That does strike me as next steps. It strikes me as. Yeah, as, for committee to consider. Yeah, it is already there. I'm um, loving this new category, Will. <laughs> excellent. Um, yeah, this one, <laughs> we laughed about this a little. Are white males in our school system most affected? Um, the answer to that one, as near as I can tell, is no. <laughs> I well, mean, there was right, and there's no data anyway um, that's being broken right. down for us, you know. But and what um, is and what does affected mean? Right. Um, I guess what it's another one for the committee to consider moving forward. So, like, who is impacted by policing in schools? Um, and, and are who, they represented? And who is disproportionately impacted? Mm -hmm. We've only got two left. Does the SRO have different training than other police officers? What is it? Ha ha, MPD. Right. If the SRO is in the building, primarily the high school, about half the time, how are they developing relationships and getting to know the students? Um, so definitely MPD. Also Libby slash other staff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it almost sounds like that's like an anecdotal piece, you know, from Matt Nisley, like our previous SROs, like giving examples of how do they build relationships. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's like a definitive, you know, structured way that they're supposed to build relationships. Mm. Okay. It's not in the memorandum of understanding, you know. Definitely not. Okay, that's it. That's the end. We're done. Okay, great. I'm sorry we left that off. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, we had a we struggled to get through all of ours as well. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I will. I'm going to put these notes together and maybe look at your minutes and then get back to people with their assignments. Fantastic. I will get those minutes to you very quickly. I assume I don't have to put this part in. <laughs> Yes, we're, this is after the meeting. <laughs> this is after the adjourning. All right, okay. great. Thank you so Thank much, you. Will. Thanks, Dylan. Bye, Orca. Bye.